or good evening. Or good evening. It's a, it's enough. It's enough. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> um, as, as you've heard, um, tonight's my last night in Taiwan on this trip. And we've had a wonderful time. Uh, serving the Lord in Taichung and now in Taipei. Tomorrow I leave early for the airport to fly to Indonesia. And I'll do conferences in Jakarta and Medan. And then I'll go from there to Manila to do conferences there. And then after Manila, I go home. So this is still the beginning of the trip. Even though it's the ending of the time in Taiwan. So again, we want to thank you for being with us and trust that tonight uh, our time in the scriptures will be helpful for you. Now we've been looking at some episodes in the life of Elisha. And we saw the beginning of his journey with Elijah last night. And then we saw him take over the ministry after Elijah was taken to heaven. And we ended up last night by seeing Elisha's first miracle. Now tonight we want to look at his most well-known miracle. And it's a fascinating story. So I would invite you to turn to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings, 2 Kings 5. Now while you're turning there, in, in my work, whether it's studying, or writing, or teaching, I am constantly dealing with words. And I have decided over the years that there are some words that I like. And there are some other words that I don't like very much. For instance, 举例来说, one of the words that I like is chocolate. Uh, I like the word chocolate because I like chocolate. And so when I hear the word chocolate, it makes me smile. It's a very nice word. And if you like chocolate, you should like that word as well. But there are some other words I don't like very much. One of those words is a word that I particularly don't like because I heard my father say it all the time when I was growing up. And most of the time when he was saying it, he was saying it directly at me. Because sometimes I would be disobedient. Or I would be disrespectful. Or I would be a little bit of a smart aleck. You know, smart aleck? Wow. Well done. <laughs> I didn't know if he would get smart Alec or not, for those of you who are listening to the English. <laughs> uh, and whenever I would do something like that, my dad would look at me, usually with his finger pointed, directly at my face, and he would say, watch your attitude. I heard my father say that 
between eight and ten thousand times when I was growing up. So 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 I was growing up. But trust me, only a little. But 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 only a little. I got to the point where I didn't like the word attitude very much. So, 到后来我真的听到态度这个字，我超不喜欢的。But then I became a Christian. 但是后来我成为一个基督徒。And I started studying the Bible. 我开始研究圣经。And I found out that the Bible feels like attitude is is important also. 但是我发觉圣经告诉我们态度是很重要的。In fact, the Bible raises attitude. To a much higher level than my dad did. 事实上，圣经里面要求的态度是比我爸爸要求的来的更高的。Because Paul says, "Let this attitude be in you, which was in Christ Jesus." 那么，因为保罗说，你的态度要像耶稣一样。Now that is a high standard. 这个标准也太高了。To have the attitude of Jesus. 你的态度要像耶稣。Is a huge expectation. 这个期待是很高的。So tonight we're going to talk in the first session about attitudes. So today, we first talk about the first attitude of this thing. And we're going to do it as we look at this miracle of Elisha healing Naaman the leper. And we're going to talk about the first attitude of this thing. And we're going to talk about the first attitude of this thing. And we're going to talk about the first attitude of this thing. Because throughout the telling of this story, because in 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 this story, And that's where we're introduced to Naaman. 那么这个时候呢，就看到亚乃曼被介绍到。It says now Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man with his master. 这边提到说，亚兰王的元帅乃曼在他主人面前为尊为大。And highly respected because of him, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. 因为耶和华曾借他使亚兰人得胜。The man was also a valiant warrior. He was a great warrior. But he was a leper. 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 But he was a And Syria was Israel's mortal enemy. But Syria is Israel's 最大的敌人 They were constantly sending their armies across the border, as we saw last night. 那么就像我们昨天所读到，他们经常派他们军队越界来抢夺 And they would raid the Israelite villages. 他们会侵略以色列的村庄 They would rob and kill and pillage. 会劫掠并且杀这些村民 And they would kidnap and take slaves. 那并且把村民绑走，变成他们的奴隶 This was such a common practice that the Syrians were hated by Israel. Because this kind of thing is always happening, so Syria is Israel's most hated country. Naaman is the head of the armies of Syria. And Naaman is Syria's most hated general. Israel's great enemy. That is, he is Israel's most hated enemy. And notice it says of Naaman that he was a great man and he was highly respected by the king. 那么这边提到说他在主人面前为尊为大。But the reason he was highly respected by the king, 而他之所以在主人面前为尊为大 ，is something that should surprise us. 那么应该是他做了什么事情让我们会感到惊讶的。Notice this statement. 请注意到这边的说法。It says he was highly respected. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He 提到他为尊为大是因为耶和华曾借他使亚兰人得胜。Now that's surprising. 这个是很令人惊讶的。God is the God of Israel. 上帝不是以色列人的上帝吗 ？We would expect God to be giving victory to Israel. 我们期待上帝会给以色列人得到胜利。But it says that God was giving victory to Israel's enemy. But God now gives victory to the enemy. 
That should get our attention. Just like it should have gotten Israel's attention. How far has Israel fallen away from God? That God would even show favor to Israel's enemies. And Naaman is the human instrument by which that favor is being exercised. He's a great man. He's a successful military leader. He's a valiant warrior. But he's a leper. Now, when we read the word leper in the Bible, we need to keep in mind that we are reading it out of the context of the experience of Israel. And Israel's experience was governed by the law of Moses. Moses' law established very strict and specific rules on what was to be done with lepers. If someone was diagnosed with leprosy, they would lose everything. Their spouse would have permission to divorce them. They would lose their family and children. They would lose their home. They would lose their job. They would lose their place in the synagogue. They would lose the right to enter into worship. They would lose their place in the community. Everything that was important and significant to an ancient Israelite would be forfeited if they were diagnosed with leprosy. And they would be forced out of the community and would have to spend the rest of their life alone in the wilderness in isolation. That's the context with which we understand the word leper in the Bible. But it's important to understand that Syria had different rules for lepers than Israel did. Yes, Naaman was a leper. Yes, this disease did not have a cure. Yes, eventually it would take Naaman's life. But none of that prevented him from being an effective officer in the court of the king. He had full access to the court and could still function as long as he could do so effectively. And so Naaman has this very serious disease, but he is a very effective servant to the king. And that's where the story starts to move from Syria toward Israel. Through a series of circumstances, Naaman discovers that there's a prophet in Israel who might be able to help him. And so he goes to the king who respects him and appreciates him and he tells him that there might be hope for him with the prophet of Israel. So notice verse 5. Then the king of Aram said, Go now and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothes. 
Here we see the first attitude in the story. So we see the first attitude in the story. So we see the And it's an attitude of concern. This attitude is concern. Now remember, as the king, the king does not owe anybody anything. Please, you, as a king, the king does not owe anybody anything. But he has grown to appreciate Naaman. But he has grown to appreciate Naaman. He has grown to admire his courage and respect his victories. He has grown to admire his courage and respect his victories. He has brought great honor to the king and to his kingdom. Because Naaman has brought great honor to the king and to his kingdom. Because Naaman has brought great honor to the king and to his kingdom. Certainly, the king has been concerned about what's going to happen to Naaman. So, the king is concerned about what's going to happen to Naaman. So, the king is concerned about what's going to happen to Naaman. And as soon as Naaman reports to him that there might be hope, so when Naaman and the king say there might be hope, the king immediately responds. So, the king immediately responds. And not only does he respond, he is, he makes his response sacrificial. So, he not only can respond, his response is sacrificial. It would be very easy for the king to say. 对对，国王来说，他可以很容易的就说。Well, I hope it all works out for you. 他说，哦，好，好，希望一切你都顺利。Go find the prophet, and maybe it'll be a good thing. 去啊，去找那个先知，说不定有好处哦。But the king doesn't do that. 但国王不只是这样。He sends him to the king of Israel. 他送乃曼到去见以色列国王。And he sends him with a letter of request. From the king of Syria to the king of Israel, 并且带着是叙利亚国王的请求信来见以色列王。Now these are hated enemies. 这两个国家是敌对的国家。But the king of Syria is willing to humble himself to the king of Israel in order to try and help his general. 但是叙利亚的王却愿意降卑，向以色列王恳求来帮助他的将军。And that should get our attention. 这个让我们要注意到。This is a great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility on his part. This is a very great act of humility. This amounts to an enormous amount of money. This is very huge. It is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times equaled twenty years of salary. This is said that one talent in the ancient times This would have been in the multiple, multiple millions of dollars. This would be very, very much in the millions of dollars. Does this say anything about how much he cares for this general? So this shows how much he cares for this general. He not only cares, he not only cares about him; he is willing to sacrificially give of his own money to try to secure healing for him. He not only cares, he not only cares about him; he is willing to sacrificially give of his own money to try to secure healing for him. And I think that's such a great attitude on his part. This is a very great attitude in this king. When you genuinely care about someone, when you genuinely care about someone, when you genuinely concerned for their welfare, when you genuinely concerned for their welfare, you will be willing to sacrifice for their betterment. You will be willing to sacrifice for their betterment. You will be willing to sacrifice for their betterment. Because that's what care and concern looks like. This is the so called concern and concern. So the first attitude. So the first attitude. Is an attitude of care and concern. 就是关心关怀 From the king of Syria. 是我们在亚兰王叙利亚王所看到的 For Naaman the leper. 他们对乃曼这个元帅 Now when Naaman arrives in 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 Israel. 然后乃曼抵达了以色列 We will see the second attitude. 我们就看到第二个态度 And this comes from the king of Israel. 而这个态度来自于以色列王 And again, you have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. You have to understand what this would have been like in that time. And that's where the king was. That 国王就居住在宫殿里面 Now remember, Syria is their most hated enemy. 而叙利亚是他们最痛恨的敌国 And here comes Naaman, 
the head general of the nation of Syria. They are accustomed to him leading his armies to attack Israel. But now he comes marching right into the capital city as if he owned the place. This would have disturbed the entire city. What's he doing here? Is he here to attack us? Is he here to try and overwhelm us? And to add to that anxiety, he's a leper. And now he's a leper in Israel. Where Israel's rules say he's supposed to stay out in the wilderness. There are a lot of reasons why this would make the people of Israel and the king of Israel very, very nervous. So he comes to the palace. So he comes to the palace. And walks right up to the king. Leper that he is. And he hands the king the letter from the king of Syria. And here's what the letter says. And now as this letter comes to you, behold, I have sent Naaman my servant to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. This is a remarkable statement. Here's the king of Syria asking for a favor from his worst enemy. And he is doing it with the assumption that this can happen. Now remember, there was no cure for leprosy. In Israel or in Syria. And so this is a ridiculous request. And immediately the king of Israel reacts. And he does so with an attitude of despair. Listen to what happens in verse 7. And it came about that when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive? That this man is sending word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? But consider now and see how he is seeking a quarrel against me. Did you hear his voice? <laughs> he reads this letter. And the one thing he is absolutely certain of is that he cannot cure leprosy. No one can cure leprosy. To make this demand that he would cure leprosy is asking him to do the impossible. And so he tears his garments. We saw that last night. We saw that it was a symbol of grief and mourning. He is grieving over what's going to happen to him. And what's going to happen to his country. Because he's convinced that all of this is just a ruse. All of this is a setup to provoke a war. He sends all this money. He makes this ridiculous request. And then when the king of Israel can't perform the request, the, offend, the offended king of Syria can attack. This is how the king of Israel reads the situation. 
and the attitude of despair. So, in the despair, his attitude that causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That causes him to tear his garments in grief. That That this man is sending word to me to cure a man of his leprosy. This man 竟打发人来叫我治好他的大麻风 All he can see are his own resources. 所以他看到只是他自己能够有的资源 And he does not have the resources for this. 而他没有资源能够做到这样的要求 And the reason all he can see are his resources. 而他为什么只能看到自己的资源 ？Is because the king of Israel does not know God. 因为以色列王并不认识神。After the death of Solomon, 在所罗门死了之后 ，When the kingdom of Israel was split into two kingdoms, 以色列分裂为两个国家。It was split into the northern kingdom of Israel, 分为北国以色列 ，and the southern kingdom of Judah, 南国犹大。When you study the history of the kings, 当你去研究这两个国家的国王 ，what you find is that many of the southern kings were wicked men. 你会发觉很多南国的国王是邪恶的 ，and they would lead the people away from the God of Israel. 他会带领人那么离开以色列的神 ，but occasionally a good king would come to the throne. 但有一两次会有一些好的国王出现。And he would institute spiritual reforms. He 又会把这个灵性的复兴带回来 And call the people back to God. 那么让人民又回到上帝的面前 In the northern kingdom, however, 但是在北国 there were no good kings. 没有一个好王 None of the northern kings had a relationship with the God of Israel. 没有任何一个北国的国王跟上帝有建立过关系 They were just as pagan as the surrounding nations. 他们就像隔其他的邻国一样，就是个外邦人 In fact, the king of Israel was spiritually very similar to the king of Syria. 事实上，在灵性上，以色列的国王跟叙利亚的国王是很类似的 The reason he has no resources outside of himself. So, in his own self, why he has no resources outside of himself? Is because he has no relationship with God. 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 And it happened when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent word to the king. So, the prophet Elisha, hearing that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, sent word to the king. Saying, "Why have you torn your clothes?" 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 Saying, "Why have Elisha's attitude, Elisha's attitude, is an attitude of willingness to help. His attitude is he is willing to help. We saw last night. We saw last night that most of Elisha's miracles are positive and helpful. Elisha's 大部分的奇迹都是比较正面，能够帮助别人的。Whether it was healing the poisoned well at Jericho, 不管是医治好耶利哥的毒的水井。Or healing the poison stew, 还是医好这个毒的这个汤 Or raising a little boy from the dead, 或者让一个小男孩死里复活 Most of the time, when we see Elisha doing something miraculous, 所以大部分我们看到伊丽莎行神迹的时候 ，He is doing it to help someone who is in need. 都是他的神迹都是帮助那些需要的人。
This is a characteristic attitude of Elisha's heart. And we see him consistently expressing this throughout his ministry. So he hears of the situation with Naaman. And he hears that the king has torn his clothes. And he sends a message saying, why are you in grief? <laughs> Send him to me. And then he makes a very important statement. So that he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Now remember what we saw last night. The specific role of a prophet was to represent God to the people. He is not saying, send him to me so that I can show him how great I am. That's not his point. Send him to me because when he sees that there is a prophet in Israel, he will understand that there is a God in Israel. That's the point. He wants to have an impact on this man's life for God. And he immediately responds with this characteristic attitude of being willing to help. So first attitude, care and concern. Second attitude, despair. Third attitude, willingness to help. Are you finding yourself in one of these attitudes yet? Stay tuned, you might find yourself yet. The fourth attitude comes from Naaman himself. So notice what happens in verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots. Remember what we saw about chariots. They represented military might. This is a great show of force. This is quite a display. Here comes Naaman with all of his chariots and horses. He's an important man. And he's an important man who does important things for important people. And all of the regalia surrounding his arrival is intended to communicate how important he is. So watch what happens. You remember what Elisha said? He said, send him to me. Right? So when Naaman comes to him, Elisha doesn't even go talk to him. He sends a messenger. I don't know why he sends a messenger. Maybe there was a really good baseball game on TV that he didn't want to miss. <laughs> Whatever he was doing, he thought it was more important than talking to Naaman. And so he sends a servant to give a message to this very important man. And immediately Naaman becomes enraged. He is enraged about who is talking to him. He is enraged about who is not talking to him. And he's enraged about the message. Notice it says, Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, 
Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. 对乃曼说，你去在约旦河中沐浴七回。Notice if you were here last night. 如果你昨天晚上在这里。Once again, we have another miracle that involves water. 那么我们又有一个神迹是跟水有关的。We talked about how frequently that happens. 我们提到说，这个很多神迹都跟水有关。So he says, "Go and wash in the Jordan seven times." 这边讲说，去在约旦河中沐浴七回。And your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. 你的肉就必复原而得洁净。But Naaman was furious. 但乃曼却发怒。And went away and said, 走了。Behold, I thought, 说我想 ，He will surely come out to me. 他必定。And stand and call on the name of the Lord his God. He 必定出来见我，站着求告耶和华他神的名。And wave his hand over the place. 在患处以上摇手。And cure the leper. 治好这大麻风。Naaman's an important man. 乃曼是一个这么重要的人。He expects to be treated that way. 他期待是这样来对待他。He has come in with this big show. 他带着他的车马。He wants another big show from Elisha. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants Elisha to come out and wave his hands. He wants And Naaman is furious. So Naaman, you know why he's furious? You know, he's furious because his pride has been wounded. 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 Now understand. Please understand. Any time someone says, "If any person says, 'Who does he think he is?'" This person thinks he is someone. What they're really saying, he is really saying, is, "Doesn't he know who I am?" He doesn't know who I am. This is all about pride. This is all about ego. 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 He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. He's angry because Elisha's not there putting on a show. And it says at the end of verse twelve, so he turned and went away in a rage. So in the twelfth verse, he says he turned and went away in a rage. Because his pride has been wounded. Because his pride has been wounded. And so he responds with an attitude of anger. So he responds with an attitude of anger. Now Naaman won't listen. To the servant of Elisha. So, Naaman 不愿意听以利沙仆人说的话。But thankfully, 但是很感恩的是 ，he does listen to his own servants. 他愿意听他自己仆人的话。His own servants come to him. 所以他自己的仆人往前来。They calm him down. 他让他安定下来。They say to him, 跟他说 ，Listen, 你听嘛。If he had told you to do some amazing thing, 如果他叫你去做很困难的事情 ，to go on some great quest， 去有很大的请求 ，some dangerous mission， 可能是很危险的任务 ，mission impossible， Naaman， 几乎是不可能的任务，乃曼第第几级 ？If he had told you something like that， 如果他跟你这么讲的话。You'd have done it right away. You 马上就会去做，对不对 ？Because you're an important man who does important things. 因为你是重要的人，你做重要的事情。But if you're willing to do something dangerous, 但如果你愿意做那些威胁的事情 
Why wouldn't you at least try to do something simple? It's not that hard. Except for your pride. Now, what's interesting is this. Sometimes, when people are suffering from fatal illnesses, the more advanced the illness becomes, 那么这个疾病的层级越高的时候, the more desperate they become. And the more desperate they become, 当他们的疾病让他们越来越绝望的时候, the more willing they are to try anything. Anything. If there's even a chance. 只要任何有机会治愈的可能, Apparently, Naaman's not that desperate yet. Or he would happily go to the Jordan River and wash. It's only after his servants convince him that he goes and is healed. So the first attitude was an attitude of care and concern. That's willing to sacrifice for the one that is cared for. The second attitude was an attitude of despair. Because he had no resources beyond himself. The third attitude was an attitude of willingness to help. Even though this man was Elisha's enemy. And the fourth attitude was anger. Because Naaman's pride had been wounded. That's a lot of different attitudes in one story. But there's one more attitude we need to see. And if you were paying very close attention, you know that there's another character in this story that we skipped. And this is the attitude that we need to see. Notice after it says in verse 1 that Naaman was a leper. It says in verse 2, Now the, the Arameans had gone out in bands and had taken captive a little girl from the land of Israel, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now, one of the realities of warfare throughout history is that to the victor goes the spoils. Naaman captured this little girl. He took her from her home. He has made her a slave. And that is what she can expect her life to be like for the rest of her life. But just hearing those words isn't enough. You need to try to see this through the eyes of the little girl. What this would have been for her. Say she's living in a village in the north of Israel. And her father and her brothers are out working in the fields. And she and her mother are in the house preparing a meal. And they start to hear this thunderous sound in the distance. And her mother looks out the window. And she sees the Syrian army approaching. Everyone knows what the Syrians are there to do. They are there to rape and pillage and kill and destroy. And as soon as the mother realizes what's happening, she screams to her daughter, Run! 
and the little girl runs as fast as her little legs will carry her. But she can't outrun the horses. And as she's trying to escape, she feels a strong arm reach down and grab her off the ground. And her body is dropped over the neck of the horse. And the horseman turns and rides away. And all she can see is her village getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And 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 she knows that she'll never see her home or her family again. And now she's a slave to the man who stole her. Now what would your attitude be toward him? Notice it says that she waited on Naaman's wife. Naaman has leprosy. And it would be very understandable. It wouldn't be right, but it would be understandable. If when this little girl found out that Naaman had leprosy, it would be very understandable if her response was, Good. I hope he dies. Would that not be a very human response? That's how normal people respond to stuff like that. But she doesn't do that. In fact, she does the opposite. In verse 3, it says, She said to her mistress, I wish that my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, then he would cure him of his leprosy. You know what her attitude is? It's an attitude of love for her enemy. You've got to understand, folks, in this moment, this little girl has all the leverage. What she could have done is she could have said to her mistress, I know how your husband can be cured. And I'll tell him. But there are some conditions. First of all, he has to take me home. And he has to restore everything they stole. And if they destroyed my village, he's got to rebuild my village. And he's got to apologize to my mom and dad. And he's got to promise never ever to raid our village again. If he agrees to those conditions, then I'll tell him how he can be cured. And you know what? That would be a very human response too, wouldn't it? Because when we have leverage, we like to use it. We like to use the advantages that we have. I'm going to fly tomorrow morning to go to Jakarta. And I'm going to be flying an airline that is not part of the alliance that my normal airline is in. And that means I'm going to be at the end of the line. And I'll be the last one to board. And I'm not going to have any of the privileges that I'm used to having on the airline I fly all the time. But I promise you, in two weeks' time, when I'm ready to fly home, 
I'm going to use every advantage I have. I'm going to go straight to the front of the line. I don't care how many dirty looks those people give me when I pass them. I'm going to be the first to board the plane. I'm going to stow all my luggage before anybody else can take all the bin space. When we have advantages, we like to use them. This little girl has all the advantages. But she doesn't use them. She displays love for her enemy. And the remarkable thing about this is that as she does this, she is representing words that Jesus would say hundreds of years later. In Matthew 5, verse 44, Jesus says, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In Luke 6, verse 27, Jesus says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. In Luke 6, verse 35, Jesus says, But love your enemies. 你们, 呃, 因为你们, 对不起, 呃, 6, 呃, 635. 635, sorry. 635. 爱你们的仇敌, yes, I got it. Okay. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Notice that part. Do good expecting nothing in return. That's exactly what this little girl is doing. Jesus says, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Jesus said, Love your enemies. Even when they do you wrong. And this little girl modeled that. Even before Jesus said it. And I promise you, it was out of these words that on the cross Jesus was able to say, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. The heart and spirit of Jesus is one of love even for your enemies. And this little girl put it on display wonderfully. Now what's very interesting is this. Elijah, Elijah, outside of the books of 1st and 2nd Kings, is mentioned five other times in the Old Testament. He's also mentioned more than 30 times in the New Testament. I mean, obviously, Elijah is a really big deal. Elisha, even though his ministry lasted six times longer than Elijah's, even though he performed twice as many miracles as Elijah, Elisha is never mentioned in the Old Testament except in 1st and 2nd Kings. 
列王记上下从来在其他地方没有被提到过。And while Elijah is mentioned thirty times in the New Testament, 而以利亚在新约被提到了三十次。Elisha is only mentioned once. 以利沙只被提到一次。But you know who mentioned him? 但你知道是谁说的吗 ？Jesus did. 耶稣提到他。And you know what Jesus was talking about? 你知道耶稣在当时说什么吗 ？He was talking about this event. 而他说的就是这一件事情。When Naaman the Syrian was healed, 当患大麻风的乃曼得到医治 ，and the leper was made clean， 而这个大麻风因此而变得好。And on a human level， 在人类的这种层级 ，the reason that event took place， 之所以这个事情会发生 ，was because of a little girl who was willing to love her enemy， 是因为那个小女孩愿意爱她的仇敌。See when we talk about the heroes of the Bible, 所以我们当我们提到说圣经当中的英雄人物 ，we talk about people like Elisha. 我们提到像以利沙这样的人。Look at all the great things they did. 你看他做的那些神迹奇事。But make no mistake. 但请你不要错过。The hero of this story is not Elisha. 这个故事的英雄却不是以利沙。The hero of this story is a little girl. 这个故事的英雄是那个小女孩。Who gave us a hint? He gave us a hint of what the heart of Jesus would look like. Jesus' heart was what kind of heart? And exhibited love for her enemy. And he showed love for his 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 enemy. And he showed love for Fourth attitude, anger. 第四个态度是愤怒 Fifth attitude. 第五个态度 Love for your enemy. 爱你的仇敌 Which attitude is most familiar to your own heart? 那么对你来说，你心里对这些态度哪一个你最熟悉 Especially when you encounter those who hurt you. 特别是当你面对那些曾经伤害过你的人 ，because there's one attitude in this story， 因为在这个圣经故事当中有一个态度 ，that matches the attitude of Jesus， 他达成了耶稣的态度。And remember what we saw at the beginning， 请永记得我们一开始所看到 ，Paul said let this attitude be in you， 保罗说让这样的态度在你我的心中 ，which was also。In Christ Jesus, because he is also in Christ Jesus' heart. This is Elisha's greatest miracle. This is Elisha's greatest miracle. But I don't think the story is about Elisha. But this story is not about Elisha. I don't even think it's about Naaman. I don't even think it's about Naaman. But this story is not about Elisha. I don't even think it's about Naaman. But this story is not about Elisha. I don't even think it's about Naaman. After Susan gives us some announcements, 在我们等下休息之后 ，I'm going to keep the promise I made last night. 那么我会呃，我说呃，维维护我昨天所说的承诺。And I will show you what I believe. 那么我会给你们看到我所相信。Is the strangest thing in the Old Testament. 是在旧约里面最奇怪的一件事情。Okay. 好。Okay. Let's pray. 我们一起来祷告。And Lord, I pray that you would、um, work deeply in our hearts. 主，我祷告，祈求你在我们心中动工。Probably every one of these attitudes is an attitude that we express from time to time. 也许这些态度都是我们曾经在生命当中遭遇过的。It's so easy for us to care about people that are important to us. 我们很容易去关怀那些对我们重要的人。It's so easy to become disheartened when life doesn't go our way. We are very easily disheartened when life doesn't go our way. We are very easily disheartened when life doesn't go our way. We are very easily disheartened when life doesn't go our way. It's so easy to become angry when our pride has been hurt. But when we are wounded, it is very easy to be angry. But Lord, it's hard to love our enemies. But God, we know we are very hard to love our enemies. It's hard to do good and expect nothing in return. We are very hard to do good and expect nothing in return. We are very hard to do good 
to those that we encounter every day. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.